Your party has been journeying through the mountains for some weeks. Everybody had heard tales of Falcon's Peak, but until recently, you weren't sure where it was. So, interested in the fame and glory, and certainly the money, everybody um, came looking for this fortune this uh, outpost, which is the last outpost of um, in the mountains before um, continuing east to get to the site. Here you found several adventurers, mountain men, and various uh, various hermits and so on. Heard some rumors. Heard a few tales, had a few drinks. And along with um, other prospectors looking for Falcon's Peak, um, you've found this interesting group of ragtag individuals. Um, so we did a little bit of introduction, but I think if you want to introduce yourselves again, just briefly, um, and start kind of getting to know each other a little bit, and we could go to uh, the tavern if you want. Oh, I didn't put a tavern in here. Taverns are always a good place to start talking, because, well, because it just is. Let me see. This looks like a tavern. Looks pretty close. So there's a few patrons in here. It's a, um, it's not the most luxurious, artsy or uh, bougie type of place that you've ever seen in your life, but they do have some great drink. And you see a number of customers standing around or sitting as the case may be, having some drinks and talking to each other and um, as you're looking around like I said you do notice a few other prospectors there's another dwarf over in the corner kind of brooding And I can probably find some more characters to throw in there, but you get the idea. Yeah. So do we have a... We already kind of know what we're... At least the base of what we're getting into right now, right? Uh, yeah, you've got a basic idea of what it is yeah. that everybody is interested in here, so... Yeah, okay. So, yeah, to quick recap, the um, the place you're going is called Falcon's Peak. Uh, Falcon's Peak is a grim fortress brooding over a mountain pass for almost a century, built by a brigand chief who called himself Lord Falcon in his days, notorious for lightning fast raids, crafty kidnappings, and utter savagery. Uh, rumors told of Falcon's wealth <clears throat> and of terrible monsters or or a terrible monster depending on which version you heard trapped in a hidden pit beneath, beneath the fort falcon supposedly fed captives to the monster as sacrifices to his evil god 
Eventually, the baronies bordering the past were forced to mount an assault on Falcon's Peak. After two days of battle, the soldiers overwhelmed the disorganized brigands, but no trace was found of Falcon, his family, or his plunder. It was said that Falcon and his family hid their treasure and committed suicide by drinking poison. Their bodies are said to have been entombed in hidden catacombs. Falcon's Peak is now uh, abandoned and untouched for almost a century. The only ones to enter the fort have been unsuccessful treasure hunters, some of which never came back out. Most of the common people believe that Falcon's Peak is haunted by the ghosts of the slain brigands, and none dare enter the old fort. It is still somewhere... Falcon's treasure has not been found. It is still assumed to be somewhere in the peak, waiting to be claimed by anyone with the courage and the luck to find it. All, um, all prospectors converge on this fort who are interested in the rumors of wealth and its spicy association with this infamous brigand. Okay, so let's start uh, introducing yourself and speaking in character. Ah, yes, my beautiful friends. My name is Jager. And what a mighty vine mustache you have, sir. And I approach uh, across the table uh, the man with the amazing mustache. Uh, and I ask, what, what might be your name? And I hold out my hand. Do you take it? Perrin. There we go. Is he here? Did he lose his connection? Maybe he lost his connection for a moment. Perrin. Okay, that's just a solid green light right now. All right, I'll move on to the next. I approach the lovely lady sitting at the table, and I ask, uh, and what name might belong to this beautiful woman? And I hold out my hand again. Uh, I turn to look at the gentleman speaking and keep my head down, just nod without taking his hand and say, Aurora, and yours? Ah, yes, I am Gayer, as I have said. Pleasure to meet you. And I move on uh, to each person uh, in the room. I'll go to Zeke next. And what name belongs to this majestic man in front of me? Well, howdy. I ain't sure if you're talking about me or that man with that beautiful mustache, but uh, I think I'm kind of more inclined to that lady right there next to me. It seems like anonymity might be a treasure all its own. But it's a pleasure to meet you. Let me know if uh, you need any help with anything. Might be able to uh, suss something out. Do you take his hand when he reaches out to you? Oh, well, I, I must decline politely. Germs about it. You never know what one can pick up out in the wilderness. <laughs> it was nice I to meet you. your acquaintance. And you, good sir. And then I'll move on to COVID. Orson. COVID. <laughs> and you, my friend. Of course. <laughs> and I hold out uh, my hand for you as well. He takes your hand immediately. Um, and without hesitating, I, I kiss uh, the uh, back of his hand and give a deep bow. The back of Orson's hand? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. You might want to wash that. Um, Orson's eyes <laughs> kind of go up and he, he gives a laugh. Like, uh, oh, all right. Uh, you, you can call me Orson. And I guess I'm here for the same reasons you are, yeah? The promise of treasure. Forgive, That'll do it. Forgive my flamboyant half-brother. He can be a little much when you first meet him, but he'll grow on you. And Aurora looks to you and asks, what's your name? 
I'm Shu. Shu Cirrus. Is Perrin here now? Hmm. Is it working? Oh, there he is. So yeah, I also approach you uh, and comment on your beautiful mustache and ask your name and I hold out my hand to you. Why, thank you. Uh, the name's Perrin. Perrin Smartfellow. Uh, your name? Gayer, my friend, and again kisses the top of or the back of his hand and gives a deep bow. Oh, don't flatter me, please. That's fine. I know I'm dashing, but still. A beautiful <laughs> man, if I have ever seen one. Well, I wouldn't know. I don't quite often see my own reflection. A shame. If only you could see yourself through our eyes. Makes it much more interesting, darling. I like this one, Chew. Well, I know you would. Speaking of shiny things and looking at things, now what all have we all heard of this, them here treasure? Now, some people say it's guarded by one monster, some say multiple monsters. Hell, I haven't heard humans this is in a pit. Let's see if we can kind of just pile together all our little rumors here. Then we plan. I'd find it hard to believe that a treasure would, or a fortress that large would be only guarded by one monster. I am curious to know if it is haunted, though. Uh, yes, how about this? A round of drinks on my brother's shoe for anyone who would like to join us in this adventure of uncovering the mysteries of this place. <sighs> yes. A round of drinks on me. <laughs> well, that, my, well, my brother is anyway. the as he is flamboyant. That, that's generous of you both. And <laughs> I'll take your largest drink, barkeep. The barkeep well, comes back kindly. with a with a big f flagon of mead. a good start. He drops it on the table in front of you. Enjoy, adventurer. <laughs> I'll have the same as him. Very good. <laughs> once we all get our drinks, I propose a toast to adventure and our coming days together as we unravel this mystery. Yes, to treasure. Oh, and I, I guess the other stuff as well. Yes. But mostly treasure. <laughs> Aye, the treasure. Yes. Cheers. To treasure. Cheers. Uh, how much was that, uh, DM? So I can mark it off. Uh, that was about two silver. Ooh. And then ten silver to one gold. So I, I don't think anybody has any silver yet. So he'll just make change for you. Okay, cool. So oh, I. Okay. So now that we are all getting to know each other, what all do we know about this place? Where should we begin? I know nobody's come back. I've heard that it's east of this fort, but where exactly, I don't know. About what time of day is it? It is For the midday right now. Again, 23rd day of the seventh month. Danu, high summer. The month is called Danu. Being uh, being untrustworthy while we're talking uh, and looking around, do I notice anybody listening too intently while we're talking and really paying us too much attention? Uh, make a perception roll. First roll of the game. Hey. Set the tone. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All 
right. I'm going to roll 20 if I can do this right. Yeah, if you open your character sheet and click on perception, it'll it'll make the roll for you. As long as everything's set up right, should be good. Uh, you do know that the dwarf was listening to you, and then just kind of got a little too drunk to continue, you know, really paying attention to anything. Well, my friends, as much as I'd like to continue to carry on this conversation, and I think we should, one of the many rumors I do hear is that wall do have ears. Which I agree. All of them. Do we? Do any of you know if we're? Would I guess or DM? Would we know if we have a contact for what we're going, or are we just kind of ragtagging this on just the uh, the quest, uh, the like the story or whatnot of it? Uh, you don't. Or is there like a contact that's sending us on it? No, there's no contact that's sending you on it. It's just something that um, a lot of people in the region have heard about. And so as the rumors spread, adventurers kind of filter in towards the keep, trying to pick up this, um, trying to trying to check it out if, if, um, if not loot the place. So yeah. the way I see it, probably everyone individually heard the rumors. Okay. And then ended up at the uh at the fort at the same time. Okay. Well, I guess in character then. Well, one of the best things, one of the best places to find information would be the barkeep. And I try to wave the barkeep to call her over, see if I can ask see what maybe she can tell us as this is the closest last civilization point before it. Ah, yes. What can I do you for, handsome? Ah, well, we have all gathered to go up to Falcon's Peak, and I was wondering if you could impart some wisdom to us, on maybe stories or any other adventures or any other tales that you've heard. Oh, the uh, the adventurers, they come through here uh, quite frequently now. There's so many. Um, most, most don't come back, so um, it must be dangerous. But those who have come back have talked of an alliance between some hobgoblins and some brigands. Can't be the old clan. Those, those are long gone, so it must be a new group of brigands. Well... Do you know anything about them? Have they said anything else? Well, their numbers are not huge in comparison to what you might expect, but there are enough certainly to um, cause some real damage. So estimates range from a dozen to just shy of a hundred. Oh, that is a... Uh... A large bear vary between them. Oh, but sure. Yeah, absolutely. I toss her like another silver piece, just thanking her for her information. Do they ever make their way close to the fort that you have here? Or do they typically stay near Falcon's Peak? Oh, you've still got uh, several days travel east from here. They don't usually come this close, but yeah, periodically, I mean... I imagine you might see a brigand through here, <clears throat> but not know it, you know, incognito, if you like. Sounds fair. Thank you. They don't start no trouble, so they just pass through and go about their business. Hmm. Um. Would we, uh, I assume we don't really know the way. 
I guess I, if the barkeep's still around, I'd also ask the barkeep um, if she either knew someone that knew the way or that, or could it describe the way up to Falcon's Peak or heading in that right direction. Yeah, you are going to head to um head to the east from here and I understand there's a few mesas and cliff faces to travel through or climb depending on how you want to do it, but ultimately if you travel um two or three days um just about due east you're gonna get there thank you for your information <clears throat> my pleasure and can i get you anything else why yes if i may be so bold i might have one last question now this being the last step off point for a mini adventure as you claim is there a last spot where we may possibly trade some coins that are weighing us down for more important things, visions, or other sundries. Oh, yes, you can get all your basics um, that you might need in our fort. You've got a uh, place to buy rations and dry meat uh, and plenty of climbing tools, pitons, rope, grappling hooks, uh, anything a mountaineer might need. Do you sell any med kits here? Any kind of feeling? Yeah, we have a few. Go any further, if you go any deeper into the mountains, though, um, you may not find anywhere else to buy, and if you do, uh, they, they might have their prices jacked up, you know. How much are you selling med kits for? Oh, you know, fair market price, standard. What's the standard? I think it's five silver pieces per med kit. Um, let me double check that. Oh man. <laughs> Healer's kit four. Oh no, that doesn't tell you. Ah, uh, bloody heck. That doesn't tell you either. Go over to my trusty PDF. Also, uh, out of character while you're checking that, um, would we have an idea of, I know I believe the month it's in autumn. Uh, would that mean it's relatively cold? So would getting colder weather gear be helpful if they're selling it? Uh, it's late summer. Oh, late summer. Okay. And you will probably not run into any cold weather as long as nothing goes horribly wrong. <laughs> Here we go. Plane of ice. As Let's long go. as. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Where's the... I thought it would be with the other kits. I guess it's not. Medicine kit, medicine kit, where are you? Oh, there's a mess kit. There's the weapons. Goodness. Okay, let's go back to Google. Sorry, bear with me. what they actually call it. Yeah, we'll stock up on med kits and pitons. Healer's kits are five gold. I was thinking they were five silver. Okay. Oof. That is dear. What do, oh, I've got 80, I guess. Somebody rolled a really high social class and has a good amount of money, but, you know. I know I do. I think I can buy a few of these kits for us all, if that's all right. Be very much appreciated. Well, yeah, if anyone carries a kit, I might know how to use them a little bit. 
Learn a little bit about the old medicine trade. Give you some gold as well for him. Well, let's see here. Uh, and you said they were how much, dear? Five gold? Five gold each, yep. And how many do you have on you that we could purchase at this time? Three. Oh, three. Oh, three. I think that sounds good enough. Um, uh, here you go. F uh, actually, 15 gold. There you go. Yes. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Who is going to be holding these? Yeah, who, um, who's training the use of these? Well, you might be surprised, but stitching up shoes and stitching up people, well, they're pretty similar. I'm uh, pretty decent, you know, stop, <laughs> stop from the blood and sewing them up. <laughs> yep, he's got medicine. So we'll give one to Zeke. I can't open my sheet. I don't think I have medicine proficiency, so I won't be carrying the kits. Doesn't make sense. I also do not know how to use those. I, would I definitely do. Now, so, if, I, if I may be so bold, as someone who likes to pretend they know about medicine, it may be advantageous of us to store these strategically. Like, for instance, I'll carry one on myself. And those of you who are the most brave will be in the front line really trading blow for blow. You might want to carry one on you. So when you go down, the most worst circumstance, I'm able to just patch you up with the med kit you have on you. That it's, might be a little bit more expeditious. It's not a requirement to have proficiency in medicine to use them. It just helps you do it better. I can carry one if you'd like. I will not be going down. <laughs> okay, one for Aurora. Don't get too overconfident there, brother. Great, kid. Don't get cocky. Now, while we're discussing equipment, I have to be, be carrying some leather and a sword, but I really have no need. Is anybody lacking yeah, some protection fabric? Blade. You've got a blade you don't need? Well, you know, I try to solve most of my problems with my fists, and if that doesn't work, well, I got something sharp. Yeah, I happen to have an extra sharp. That's just weighing me down. It sounds like I'm six days of that heat. I look at the great sword on my back. I say, I'm good. Thank you, though. Indeed. Uh, I, I appreciate the offer too, but <clears throat> I think I'll be all right. If nobody wants to take it and you don't want to sell it, I can hold it, put it in my pack for you if it's too much. <laughs> I like this lady already. There's a slight grin on her face. Oh, okay. I don't know where this uh, trading post is. I have to have some more dried meat, jerky, provisions, and maybe some red pittance. Um, and the, okay, so for the um, rations, I always track those as a group. Just to make it easier, I just will let you know periodically that it's time to spend some money on rations. I think I put it, I usually have it in my adventure log. I think I actually even put it in. No, I didn't yet. Okay. So right now everybody has 14 days of rations and water. And how many? 
14 did. And how much uh, would a grappling hook be? A uh, grappling hook, yes. Of course. I was just there. Suck on it. Two gold for a grappling hook. If I could purchase one of those, just in case we... You did mention some cliff edges. If we need anything to climb up with, attach it to some rope. I'll grab an extra rope as well. I'm gonna grab those pitons. Don't mess around. The pitons yep. are one use only. Once they're, once they're in, you can't pull them back out. So if you want pitons, you might want to buy a lot of them. <laughs> Grab 20 of them. They're five copper. That's that's pretty decent. Actually, I'll also get a second grappling hook if you have any more, just in case one breaks. It's 100. Oh, yeah, they've got plenty of grappling hooks. That's one goal. So, <laughs> all right. Right, right, exactly. They're pretty cheap, so I wouldn't I wouldn't skimp on the pitons. If I can tell you guys anything about uh, Thor's last game, I know it's meta, but pitons are the way to go. <laughs> Especially if there's lava involved. I don't know if there'll be lava. <laughs> what are pitons? Sorry, I They're just it's spikes. Like, uh, yeah, you just sink them into the rock and oh, okay. kind of like you can tie your rope around it or you can just use them as handles or, you know, however you want to do it. But once they're pounded into the rock, that's it. You don't you don't pull them back out. They're just that's it. Okay. Um, I'll need a, a token, or I'll need you to assign a token for me for my beast. Which one's your beast again? He's the beast of land. It's the um, proficiency bonus two. I tried to put a token out out of the. Oh, journal, okay. But it obviously, won't let. Let's see. Because that could be important. Interesting. So it gives me this guy right here, which is... That's probably fine for today. Yeah. And I'll put the... Um, I'll put this into your journal so you can drop it out whenever you're summoning your beast. Perfect. Is that another unit euphemism? Why? Uh, could be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 100%. When in doubt, go with yes. Guys, I'm going to go summon my beast. I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they kind of give you the freedom that it's basically any land animal you want, but it's just summon like a, a spirit kind of. He's gone. He's super fast. <laughs> Leaving nothing but pixie dust and the fresh scent of pine in his wake. So if we're going to go together as a group, when would you all like to leave? Would you rather go tomorrow or start off this afternoon? Once we've purchased all that we need to. Well, I say the quicker the better. No time like the present, my friends. Rolling stone gathers no moss. One more thing before we go. And I'm going to approach the uh, clearly drunken dwarf in the corner uh, with a full tankard and sit down in front of him and offer him uh, in exchange for any knowledge you might have of Falcon's Peak, a fresh drink. Ah. To see what, if he has any info and if I can get anything out of him by boozing him up some more. Aye, lad. 
Let me, I'll tell you thing. about Falcon's Pig. I went to the top of the pig. I didn't end the end of, you know. And as he passes out, I just found the tankard. I, I don't know where to start or where, where to end. And there were the puddles that... That turned into people. Puddles <laughs> that turned into people, you say? Were they handsome people? The captain's son wants to be the captain of the bandits. And then uh, he just descends into uh, incoherent babbling. <laughs> Would we have heard any of this? Well, he wasn't trying to be particularly stealthy or secretive about it, so probably. And as I go back to the table, I'll share, obviously, the what he said and how drunk he was. I'm not sure if it's worth listening to. <laughs> I am not used to this level of cooperation in a game. <laughs> Puddles turning into. So, I do have a question for the uh, the DM. Sure, go ahead. If we're per if we're purchasing equipment, we uh, we adding it manually to our character sheet and then subtracting our money manually. I would subtract your money manually, um, but I would not add it manually to your character sheet. I would go to the compendium. That's the eye with the circle around it. And um, I'll broadcast this again just to uh, make sure because this is. Uh... I got that. I just want to make sure you want to type it into the chat while that was kind of like a written spin. Oh, yeah. No, you can just. Um, you can just buy it. I mean, it's, you know, the simple stuff is no big deal. But. So if I go to the compendium here, if you guys look at the screen that I'm broadcasting, the compendium is is this right here. This is um, where you can get um, you can get all the equipment or the um, uh, like all the class features and stuff. You can just basically drag them onto your character sheet. So I can. Well, let's see here. So you guys can look at this character. That's not going to matter. So I've got my character and the, you know, I want to give him some arrows. So I just type arrows into the search field. And then you just drop it over. It says accepting drop from compendium. And then they'll just pop right in there. And certain things will give you another class resource. So like ammunition will give you another class resource. So, and when you do add, um, like, certain pieces of equipment, shoot, certain pieces of equipment, like, tools come to mind, there's, there's going to be, like, items that say, like, carpenter's tools, and then there's going to be proficiencies that say carpenter's tools, and it's, it's really, really easy to accidentally grab the proficiency instead of the item. Um, so that's just a caveat. You'll notice that it's under the rules heading. So I want to go down to where it's under the items heading. And then I can drop my carpenter's tools on there. So it's really, really easy to actually just give them a proficiency instead of the tool that you're looking for. A lot of them don't have this preface in front of it that says tool proficiency. They just Wait a second. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking of down here. So, proficiencies, not items. I can drop that, and it'll look like it's accepting the drop, but it never actually appears in your item list because you just added a proficiency for carpenter's tools. So, does that make sense? 
yeah, it's a real pain. <laughs> it's it's very very so helpful, funny. but also a pain. <laughs> so, but I would not I like type. I would not type things in manually because, um, other than being more of a pain and and you know possibly introducing errors, it'll also like bring in all of the information for the equipment that you're dropping into your character sheet. And if it has some kind of effect, like for example, with, when you drop a piece of armor on your character sheet, it'll change the armor class. When you drop an, a weapon on your character sheet, it'll add in an attack for that weapon. So, um, so yeah, use the compendiums. <laughs> I paid good money for those compendiums, so use them. <laughs> Will do. And... Do they sell tents here as well? Sure do. I think it's... Do you want a two-person tent or bigger? Would you all be interested in a tent? Since we will be traveling for at least two to three days? I think a couple two-person tents would be good. Okay. Yeah, I'll pick up a two-person tent. I think they're two gold apiece. Yeah, two two gold for a two person tent, and you can get bigger tents if you want. Dude, Gare, since I got the drinks, would you mind grabbing us a tent? Well, that actually just might make sense if there is what about six of us? We would need about two two person tents to help allow us to have two people on watch and four people sleeping. We could just rotate that one. Yes, exactly. So yeah, I'll grab a tent, and then I think uh, I think Gary was gonna grab the other one. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. And I'll also be picking up a shovel. I feel like the crowbar and the shovel. Ain't much that can stop us. <laughs> that Good is idea. Enlightened perspective that you have there. And I think what six torches in a tinderbox, maybe, just so we can light the path if it's dark. Well, I actually have a tinderbox and ten or ten torches. Even better. I've never really used a torch. Well, oh, now, are, very good. are any of you cane and climb? Like, any of you know, like, magic words you can just speak and, like, poof, and light comes on? We're going to be using torches. I can create light if we need it. Time comes. Oh, does anybody, does anybody have dark vision? What are, what are our races? I'm human, but... Got that half-elf night vision... Dark vision. I'm human, but don't worry about me. I also have night vision. Halfling here. All right. I'm just curious. I, I don't care. Like that's good. I'm not. I'm not racist in this part. Also, a uh, quick question. I forgot to give my character a description. Could I drop that in the in-character chat? Oh yeah. Feel free. Definitely. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. My character description is exactly what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Works. Exactly who I thought when I was making him. Mine's pretty close. Uh, I will say I've got uh, kind of a purple and black armor, uh, a skirt. Uh, my hair is in a messy top bun type of a thing. I'm pretty. <laughs> we are some purdy brothers. Perfect. Hot boys. I'm going to bust out to go put the kid to bed before this gets any further. Ah, the euphemism. I've got a few, like... Probably simple battles 
for our early encounters that should be an introduction to your to the procedures and your characters and stuff you know battle wise so okay That's cool. who has not played before are there people that haven't played me okay yeah, yeah we'll walk fine. you through it never been a player i've only been a the dm oh god all right poor bastard I'm usually stuck being a DM too, so unless I'm on roll twenty. Only played a few times. I feel like roll twenty took off with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. That's certainly when I started using it. I'd, I'd had my account for a long time, but I, I really started using it a lot during the pandemic. That's awful. Okay, shall we move on? Yeah, absolutely. I'm down. Uh, the next day is a warmer day with light cloud cover. Light to no cloud cover. Okay. And if you're continuing to follow the road, you can make it almost to the first Mesa on the second day. And each day I'm still just kind of leery of bandits, so I'm going to be watching out for them. Especially if we're going at just like a normal pace or whatnot. Totally fair. Y'all yeah, have Muffin kind of pace us at a wide berth. Um kind of circling the... Because you're still kind of walking by your mule, right, Perrin? Uh, riding the pony. Uh, Curtis, the pony. So. Yep, I'm the one up in the front walking next to my mule, keeping my eyes peeled. Uh, help as well. Keep my eyes out for anything, especially on the hilltops, where someone would have advantage. It's the Marine in me. You're a Marine? Yep. Oh, man. All right. Cool. Not active duty anymore, but, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine. Yep. I'm not just respect. Thank you. Um, so you guys are just following the road east, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, as long as yes. the road goes, we'll go east. Yeah. I think. Do we notice anything? Nope. It's a fully uneventful day of travel. Okay. The landscape gives way from plains to farmland. I knew they were bandit farmers. <laughs> well, the bandits would probably just take the crops if if they were going to get involved with farming. Where are you going with your their funky produce? So Shu gets the ten hour nap tonight. Shu's excited Shoe. for a ten hour nap. I 
just <laughs> I think I just inadvertently ate half the sticker on my apple. Ooh. Nice. I, I have a half <laughs> sticker Tasty. here. Uh, <laughs> I really like apples. Let us know what it looks like when it comes out. Hopefully you like stickers. Uh, I mean, they're delicious, apparently. I didn't realize. It's about to be a scratchy sniff. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> if you scratch something that comes out of me, that's on you. That's uh, <laughs> That's your fault. Uh, it is a heavy fog night. Targets beyond five feet have cover. Wow, all right. Ah. Um. Uh, I'm trying to see what I can offer the party. I'll, I'll take most of the watch. Mm. Like, literally six hours of it, if you guys are okay with that. I can take the other two. Good, good. How about you just stay up an hour late and wake up an hour early? Is that fair? Sure. Awesome. So, um, the rest of the party doesn't know, obviously, but I'll take the watch as a bear. Yeah? Because I have advantage on smell, and I have the blind sight fighting, so my visibility is, visibility is actually way better than five feet. So between myself and Muffin, we can just keep circling the camp a little, you know, like 35, 40 feet out. No problem. I'm already asleep. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I figured... Well, you'll never guess what your first encounter is of the night. Jesus, is it a bear? It is a bear. I legitimately <laughs> rolled a bear encounter. Right. This is great, Ashley. So you said this is during the first watch of the night? Yeah, so while Orson is on watch as a bear, oh. um, he gets a friend that just comes by. <laughs> I can talk to bears? Yeah, you can. In this one. So. I'll let this bear know, like, hey. She's probably. Go another way. She's probably saying, like, hey there, handsome feller. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that ain't me. I'm, uh, spoken for. So. You should probably. I'm going to advise you to pick another direction. There's humans here. Oh god, did this just turn into a furry campaign? <laughs> I think it almost just went National Geographic. No judgment, but just question. At the first uh, Nookie encounter in the game. Is she convinced to head off? Oh, like her little heart broke. <laughs> oh. Bastard. That could have been your last chance to get some. Are you sure? Problem with love. You put a heartbreak. <laughs> Damn. Rejection is real. <laughs> um, Later, there's going to be like a horde of like 300 bears that come to attack us. And you're going to see <laughs> that bear just leading the charge from the heartbreak. Ooh. That'd be great to like coerce them to work for us and we just have this army of fucking bears. Yeah, you just gotta beat their alpha in one on one, and then you'll be the alpha. <laughs> I think I got a good shot. I 
unless it's some kind of cave bear. Something like that. What are the worst bears? Is it brown or grizzly? I can't remember. At least around where I live. I think it's brown bears that are just like fucking savage beyond all reason, if I remember right. Yeah. The worst bear is the bear right in front of you, always. <laughs> no. My no, wife no. was like, my wife was like, you could just walk into a panda enclosure and just start petting him. I was like, nah. So when I Googled that shit, or I YouTubed that for her, I was like, yeah, watch this guy get his ass torn up by a panda. I bet it was unbearable. <laughs> yes. Oh, I was waiting for it, God damn it. I yeah. bet it. I bet it was. I just found all this other stuff I need to do. I gotta go, guys. <laughs> oh. First, first casualty of the campaign. So I see there's a merchant. Uh. What the fuck is that? Also, is this merchant coming in the morning? Early morning, oh, like okay. crack so of dawn. During my last watch. Yeah, that's you on watch. Uh, she has a small cask of Third and Red Cheeks finest. Yes, please. Masterwork longsword. Masterwork light crossbow, two masterwork daggers, masterwork shield. Masterwork. I need to go look at these really quick. <laughs> masterwork fishing tackle. Draft of the nimble goodberry cluster. And a brass wind up rat. I am looking for that rat first. <laughs> How much Absolutely looking for that first. Oh wait. <laughs> I don't see the brass wind up rat. Uh, it's uh I don't I don't know that that's in the uh standard books. <laughs> it might not be. Like yeah, wind it up be... and then it goes like t five feet and explodes, that'd be awesome. I don't know if it explodes, but you, you <laughs> could you could rig it to explode, maybe. <clears throat> you might might need an oh, like it, artificer yeah. to do that. Um, so at this point, as this merchant's coming through, and I, I see you're coming, um, would you say it's been in eight hours, so everybody's gotten their long rest at this point? So it wouldn't hurt to wake them so they can see if there's anything they'd like? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, I'll go in and start to wake up the others so they can make any purchases they may want. Is Masterwork Friday? Is Masterwork what? 5e, 5th edition. No, I don't think they have a Masterwork category in 5e, but... So what would the equivalent be? It's just really nice. It's just really nice, yeah. Like, gotcha. So it's still just a normal normal weapon. Like, mechanically, statistically speaking, it's it's there's yeah, nothing special it about it. Nice. But it's... Yeah, it's it is very beautiful and, and a lot less likely to break. I am interested in the shield that you have. How much would it be? 40 gold. 40 gold. Uh, I'm slightly less interested in the shield. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> the br the brass wind up rat is going for um, seventy five gold. Damn it! What's Can the deal with a, that uh, raft of nimbleness? <laughs> and it actually contains an oracle stone inside. Um, you have to attune it. When you wind it up and let it go, it travels uh, up to a hundred feet. Um, the user can see within 30 foot radius of its location. This lasts for 10 minutes. When it's used, it loses its charge. During a long rest, the user can roll a d4. On a one or a three, it's recharged. On a two or a four, it means it failed to recharge. Can I do a uh, investigation or I guess perception check on the merchant? 
or anything about her, like her shoes or the weapons to see if they've been used, like if she picked these guys off of Dead Adventures or anything like that. Sure. It would then be investigation or perception? Perception. How much for that draft of the nimble? Uh, draft of the nimble is 50 gold. Lasts one hour, gives the user plus five to dexterity, um, checks and saving throws. And there was a fine wine there? That is... Small cask of Third and Red Cheek's finest for five gold. Fifteen cups worth of brandy. Uh, yes, please, to that. Okay. Okay, so, um, she is... She is a very experienced and grizzled merchant who has seen some shit. <laughs> Probably has a bit of a thousand-yard stare. And you can see that she's got some some uh, weapons readily available hiding under her clothes if she needs them. As sometimes mountain travel can be dangerous. By herself? She's traveling by herself, yeah. Actually, could I ask her what she's seen up ahead as she's coming the direction we're going to be traveling to? Any unsavory types, bandits? That's a good idea. Any puddles lying around on the path we're taking, perhaps? Uh, there's a Misa up ahead with a small farm up on the plateau and a sizable body of water, but I didn't come too close to it. I skirted around it. Okay. And is there a reason you skirted around it? I would imagine you'd at least maybe want to see if you could make some money off of it. No, probably not from a you farmer, but I also didn't want to... Um, sometimes farmers can be territorial, and I just didn't want to go through that and end up having to defend myself. It's understandable. Thank you for your information. Cool. Sure thing. And she is off if you guys are done. Yeah, I'm good. Too pricey for me. Get back and start packing up the tents. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anything to that brandy besides it's just brandy? It's just brandy. Really good brandy. Awesome, awesome. awesome. over to Zeke and ask him if he wants to keep an eye out more ground level as we're continuing on I can keep my eyes out towards the mountaintops can do that sounds like a mighty fine idea All Uh, so, Let's see if anybody else comes down the trail. So, after about a half day of travel, um, you are approaching the plateau that she mentioned. Okay. 
you can see in the distance that there is some kind of structure on top, presumably the farm. Um, do you want to check it out or do you want to go around it? Turn back to the rest of the group and just put my hand out so we can all kind of gather and get a consensus on what everybody would like to do. Well, I'm not one for turning my back. That's a good way to get a dagger lodged deep in there. Maybe uh, one to a sneakier people, kind of give them the old sneak and peek. Everybody else kind of hangs out a little bit and see if we can just bypass it. Sure. You okay. could probably spend a couple hours climbing up a nearby mountain and see what you can see from a distance. Hours. If you want to, or you can just head in and check it out close up. I think really without a spyglass, it's probably not going to do you a great deal of good to try to check it out from a from a distant peak. I guess it is pretty flat once you get up there, so you'd probably have I mean, to it's a farm, it. right? Mm-hmm. Would, would we be diverting around? Is it, like, on our path? Oh, the path goes through it, but you don't have to go through it if you don't want to. I'm one just for following the path. The path kind of goes, like, into the Mesa and kind of winds around and then comes back to the mountain. Now, this tickles me as a trap. It seems like a textbook bottleneck. Right. If you guys have a problem with it, I don't I don't need to go there, but I don't looking at a farm, I don't see a point in going around it. If you guys don't want to do it, I'm okay with that too. The merchant made it through just fine. I think as long as we don't bother with the farmers crops or anything, I don't think they'll cause us any trouble. Unless that merchant is a scout. Potentially. But I like the way you I'm, think, man. <laughs> I'm not opposed to either option here. Friends, what's life without a little bit of risk? Let's just go through, it's fine. Well, a long life, my friend. A long life. <laughs> life is not worth much if you're not living, darling. <laughs> is it long right or here? does it just feel long? <laughs> she said. Well, at least let Thank me kind of walk in first. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> Do we have anybody who does well at being quiet, sneaky? Well, I do. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I think I might be able to disguise myself a little bit. I, I, I do it every now and then. I can take the first walk in all sneaky peaky like. If everything's all good, you know, you guys can just keep all right i will how far back would you like me from you Maybe about 20 feet well hopefully within shouting distance if you hear me say oh shit Good. hopefully you guys are there looking quick all right i'll be 30 feet behind z because he stealths in I'll wait with Aurora. Yeah, I guess the rest of us will just come in behind you guys. That's fine. I would uh, get off my mountain walk through this, though, just in case. So how do I actually roll on my disguise kit uh, using the character sheet? It's a deception roll. Oh, okay, so just roll deception and then what, add two for proficiency for the kid, or...? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Getting a little headache. Oh, no. Alrighty. In we go.
Go ahead and drop your tokens on the southwest side of the map. I would, um, I do recommend being careful about, um, things like spreading out or. What? No, I'm good. You can have it. Splitting the party or anything like that. So like if, if you do encounter, what? um, some combat, then Build up. it will be, you know, I'll just take it as is. I'll just, I'll, I'll count your tokens as being what you see is what you get. Okay, I know you showed us how to do this, but just, just dragging my name into the map. Yeah, you want to yeah. click on on your um, on your name where it turns blue, not the sandwich menu on the left, and drag that onto the map, and your your default token will appear, which hopefully I set it correctly. <clears throat> Got it. Thank you. Okay. And I, I set you up so that you're um, you're looking at your hit points and your armor class over your uh, tokens. Oh, nice. All right. It's not foreboding. <laughs> That's literally the only thing I hate about roll twenty is when the DM puts you on a map. It's like, oh, okay probably going to be something going on here. Well, I use maps case? almost all the time because of exactly that. Like, I will I will use maps pretty literally. So, nice. it could just be an area that you're walking through because, I mean, otherwise it's like, it's a dead giveaway. I mean, or it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, yeah. Of what's happening. <laughs> Um, just so I know where to place mine, since I'm going to be 30 feet behind Zeke, um, are, would we be entering in through this, the south side or? Yeah, the southwest up, side. Know? Okay. So I'm assuming we're just going to trail behind Zeke a little bit. So as he moves up, we'll all just kind of slowly move up. Yeah, let's see 30 feet behind uh, Aurora. Also, do we still have those? You said we all start with those communication crystals. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Would we have needed to do anything to make sure all of ours are connected with one another so we can speak amongst each other? You tap them, and I would have assumed that you have done that with the, with the party. So, um, okay. But, right. And then anybody else you want to speak with that has one, you just tap it. So. Okay. And then they're added to your phone book. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So, yeah, with a deception of 16, I try to disguise myself kind of like an old man. I'm going to be kind of like slowly kind of limping into the town. My hands are free. You know, daggers are with an easy grab, but oh, it's kind of I, nonchalantly I, shuffling in. I wouldn't I wouldn't think of it as a town. It's it's not a town. Farmer. Let's see. That was Zeke that was disguised? Yeah. Yeah, I rolled a 14 on the subscription plus two, I guess, for proficiency with the kit, and then a 19 on stealth. Got it. Okay. Oh, I like the disguise icon. That's cool. <laughs> what are you disguised as? Old man. Old man. Old man, Zeke. Wherever you uh, move, Zeke, I'll uh, position myself behind you. Who was the hand smoocher? Which one of you guys was the hand smoocher? Yo. Gay, you're at your service. <laughs> All right, I moved. I moved up my forty. Forty, goddamn. Should be. Th I think that's thirty behind you. Is each each square is five, right? Yes, this is a um, normal scale map. 
usually the only thing that's not normal scale would be like the overland map like the one we were just on most of them like most of the encounter areas or the uh indoor areas are going to be five feet squares five feet squares sounds like a country song right there five feet Wait. squares we drink and drink and drink and then we'd walk in five feet squares Sorry, anybody a country music fan here? I mean, that was like half a country song right there. That was good. <laughs> we, we literally live 20 minutes from Nashville. Yeah. Oh, we didn't have a choice. All right. Yeah, yeah. Just no. force-fed it growing up. It's painful. <laughs> My mom is Dolly Parton. Fuck mm -hmm. you guys. <laughs> Dolly Parton is all of our moms. We all read her books, and she is a godsend. Dolly Parton she, is is everybody's mom. <laughs> all hail Dolly! A national treasure. treasure. She is a. I was going to say she's a national treasure. No, no sarcasm there at all. She's amazing. I'm pretty sure Nicolas Cage tried to steal her at one point. <laughs> you got to what? Ha. Ha. I get it. That's funny. Oh, the. The movies. All right, all right. All right. I guess I'll come up with you guys. All right. Orson is staying mounted because he is slow as fuck. Okay. <clears throat> I can probably throw a horse icon your way next session if you want one, but I don't mind you not... just if you just want to say you're mounted, it's fine too. Yeah, it's just a horse. It's not like I think my last guy had a special horse or something, so that was important. I think it was Barnaby. Um, Barnaby was the horse. Yes. These maps will let you walk anywhere. Um, there, there's nothing stopping you from walking right through the rocks. Um, but if you like, if you want to go up these cliffs, you'll need a climb check. Um, a lot of times, more than one. So, and if it's not yeah. clear the um, the direction, uh, I'm gonna draw some arrows in the down direction so these arrows are pointing down from these cliffs the the little shadow edge is the is the um, bottom of it so and then you can see up in the plateau there's there's no no shadow there is this the shaded area that Zeke is now in uh, does this look like water or is this just shadow? That's a that's I'm if not you. Sure on the map. It's a shadow. If you zoom out, okay. you'll see the peak. Um, oh, yep. Next Poison. next to him, that's casting that shadow. Okay, got it. So, and it's actually ended up being about the right time of day too. There's nothing special that's like making that happen. It's just in the image. <laughs> All right, I'm going to touch my communicator and try and communicate with him. Yep. Go hey, ma'am, I, I know you're behind me. Now, I'm going to kind of come up right on the edge of that cliff there, and I'm not sure if you ever ate pie a lot as a kid growing up, but I'm going to kind of cut that corner almost like slicing a, a thing of pie. I like to call it pie in the corner. So if you want to kind of come with me as I kind of come around and cover me just in case there's some kind of ne'er-do-wells on the other side. And that was to me? Yeah, I figured you know what pie yeah, meant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nope. Got you. I'll I'll be there. And don't eat pie.
not 100% sure if that's what you meant. Yeah, I was going to cross over if you want to kind of butt hook around that corner. Gayer's going to get impatient and just try to scale this little ridge. What did you say? An athletics check? Yep. And do we see anybody or anything unusual? Point. Okay, Gayer is up. You can just put him right on the uh, on the top side of that plateau that you're next to. So... Um, make a perception check to see if you see anything unusual. Oh, me? I can see a damn Aurora. Um, you see a, a large female statue of a warrior to the south. Hmm. Kind of hard to miss, oh. actually. Over to Zeke and... Gonna keep pace with you now. What do you think this is? Well, if I get closer, I got a little magnifying glass. I might be able to take a little look see if I can see what I can tell. All right, I'll follow. Oh, we're gonna do an investigation check. Mm hmm. Uh, the statue is. Um... Probably 40 feet tall to 50 feet tall. And it's depicting a female warrior. So go ahead and roll investigation. Uh, I think mine's a times two, so I think it's one of my expertise. That and these tools. Okay. Um, you do a pretty thorough search around the base and um, along the surface of most of the statue, and there's nothing that really jumps out to you as being like um, hollow or any kind of trap or anything interesting other than just the fact that it's a statue. I'm going to guess that Orson right, well, probably wants to catch up, so I'm just going to... Okay, cool. Yes. Is there any plaques or anything on this statue, like saying who it's to, or? No. Huh. Would we know anything from being in the area at all, what it might be depicting of? You can roll a history check. I. I'll do that. I mean, it's a pretty big statue. Does it look weather worn, or is it just kind of? Uh, yeah, it's it's a little weather worn. I mean, it's not like ancient, but it's it's a little weather worn. So yeah, it's nobody you recognize, but your guess your best guess is probably a local lord or lieutenant of some kind. Maybe maybe from the past. And just. Hmm. Um, are we able to walk behind it? Mm -hmm. See if there's... Alright. Uh, is there any... I don't know if it's large enough, but would it have an opening anywhere? Maybe at the well, base or anything? No, he the investigated it pretty pretty thoroughly oh, okay. and didn't find anything like gotcha. that. 
I'll keep that in mind, though. Next time I put a secret door on a statue, I'll make it in the butt. <laughs> I said, what, what, in the butt? Oh, God. <laughs> Um, this is really odd to have this out on a farm, so Cole's going to get here. Well, the, the whole map isn't the farm. It's, there is a farm in the area. Yeah, but it's weird that it's, I don't know, it's weird that it's here. There's nothing else around here but this farm. Tap the crystal to Zeke and ask if he wants to do the same thing rounding the corner. Had enough to get me up. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll just kind of see if we. Nineteen athletics. <laughs> yep, and that'll get you up. You think a merchant lady who gives directions would have mentioned? Oh, gee, I don't know, like fifty foot statue of a woman. That's a pretty good landmark. Yeah. Watching his brother climb the cliff. Shu is also going to try to climb the cliff. This should be great. It should be great. It, it was great. Uh, shoo. <laughs> shoo made it about 14 feet up and fell, taking six bludgeoning damage. Should have used better shoes, shoo. Ha, ha. I just kind of smirked. Oh. Well, hail. Mm -hmm. uh, Chu's going to touch himself and uh, just cast Cure Wounds on him and just go. Yeah. Just touch I thought there was. That was going somewhere else for a second. <laughs> yeah, that, that got real weird real fast. <laughs> no, really, that's. <laughs> I wasn't trying to play that kind of game. <laughs> no, this is good for both of us. <laughs> okay. Shoes back to full. Okay. Just while he's walking, just touched himself. You can see that there is a... some kind of merchant's tent and some wares arranged around the pond here. Can I do a perception check for anything that seems out of place or for any merchants? Um, yeah, go ahead and roll it. So you will uh, notice that there's... There's a lot of very obvious evidence that it's been ransacked and all the stuff has been picked over. Like, if there maybe was once something valuable here, it's gone now. That merchant stole all this stuff. Can we investigate it to see if we find any clues of what might have happened? Yep. Everybody can feel free to investigate. Can I use a survival roll to try to, like, track what kind of tracks are around here? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. It's my other stuff. It's not very good. <laughs> Wowzers. Okay. Wow. Um, Perrin, wow. Perrin is finding some uh, dead bodies that have been um, tossed in the lake and weighted down to stay underwater. Oh, God. Guys, I found the most interesting rock ever. <laughs> fucking roll the yes. zero. <laughs> yeah. How can you, know how you, how can you even roll a zero? <laughs> um, Investigation minus one. Um, folks, there's uh, there's corpses in the water. I'm not quite sure why. And like to... Orson, whoever might have once been here, is um, 
the tracks have have either blown away or been washed over okay. or whatever. Is this like scrubland kind of where we're at now? Yeah, highlands, scrubland, plateaus, like not a whole gotcha. lot of vegetation grows up here, but um, I mean, it's not devoid of vegetation either, but. Do we, uh, do we see how many bodies were in the, tossed in the lake? There's four. Four. Well, I doubt that the merchant was able to take on four people. I don't know. She looked pretty burly. Is there something uh, magical or arcane in nature about this lake that's in front of me? Uh, not, not that's immediately obvious, no. So, Can I do a check to try to see if there's something peculiar? You would have to cast Detect Magic. Never mind. Zeke uh, taps his communicator so everyone can hear him, and you can tell his voice changes from a usual draw, and he says in a more normal voice, looters about, draw weapons, use caution. I'll pull my sword out. Where is he? I twirl my mustache in preparation. Into my mustache, you sons of bitches. Mm. <coughs> Has anyone looked inside of the tent or in it in any way? Yeah, it's like empty. It's devoid of. It's just tossed. Like. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was the uh, table there that I see. Thank you. Anybody care to taste test the water? Now four bodies floating in, you maniac. <laughs> uh, That's dark. Sure I, get <laughs> for tasting water. I do intend to get those bodies out to give them some kind of a burial after this, but... I'll assist in that. I was headed that way until I heard blades out. <clears throat> I'll dismount. Wait, where are we headed? South? I think Ooh. we're just kind of spreading out a little bit right now. Okay. I need to zoom out, apparently. And would I see this farm up here, or is this sledge too high up that I wouldn't be able to... Uh, yeah, you can you can see some of the structures up there. <clears throat> but... I will... This looks like I'm... the plateau the merchant described, and there's, there's a building here, and some uh, stacks of wood, and... I will uh, tap the crystal so everyone can hear me, and ask... Uh, let them know what I see, and ask them if we want to question the farmer, knowing that he's not too far away from floating dead bodies, or if or, we want to carry on through. Zeke responds with simply, good with facts, bad with people. I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> I think I can manage this conversation. With you, I would then. say we should probably check on the farmer. Yeah, and it's have him through here. here. So, do we see any signs? Damage, or is there like signs of smoke, like some cooking? Do we notice anything? No, nothing like that. There's no signs of anybody around, though, either. There's a little tumble down shack in the. Uh, front middle of the plateau and there's a tent um with some uh, that's not a tent there's like a um like a table slash i don't know what to call it a structure with some different plants and vegetables on it and stuff and he's got a well and some crop um areas and that's about all you see. And there's some barrels to the side of the shack area. I'm going to go up to the shack 
is the door closed or is there even a door? Uh, it's open. Open. And there's. Uh, to, uh... I can go go in first if you'd like, unless you want to knock. I was just going to knock <clears throat> to see if someone was there. But you While they're doing that, can I investigate the well for a dead body? It seems to be the common disposal method. We can go. Yeah, go now. ahead. And there is nobody in the shack. Nobody in the shack. Uh, then I'll uh, investigate inside the shack to see if I can find anything or any type of clues or just anything useful. Um, Zeke no. finds a dead farmer and a dead child in the well, as well as a dead dog. Yep, makes sense. Common disposal method. I have the shovel. You can bury him. I will uh, assist. Uh Shoe, you said you were investigating. Can I assist him in investigating the shark? Yep. If uh, two people who are proficient are investigating together, then um, whoever has the best roll can roll with advantage. Not proficient. Not proficient. I am. I can come over there. I'll come over there and take a look. I'm uh, a. As you come over, I'm going to just touch you on the shoulder and I'll just cast guidance on it just for fun. All right, and mine's expertise will be times two. Yeah, and it'll be an extra D4 on top of that. Sweet. Isn't expertise just times two on the proficiency? Yes. Oh, okay. I think it's already doing that in your roll because it's giving you a plus six. (laughs) Ah, okay, that makes all sense. And... It Question. should be, yeah, Looking... it should be automatic. All the uh, all the modifiers should already be figured out for you when you click investigation. Or what, gotta, whatever it is you're using. Yeah, then you just gotta add a D4 uh, for the guidance that I can Yeah, the, you know. the guidance will not be on there. You do add D4 for the guidance. And taking a look um, around at the crops and everything, do they still look like they're healthy or are they dying... Just to get an idea of maybe how long they've been dead in there, if they haven't been tending to their crops? Um, The crops have been looted. They're not really dying or unhealthy, but, like, half of them are missing, and, like, all of the, all of what remains have been, has been, like, picked of their, of their fruit or their edible parts, and pretty much none of that remains. So, and in the shack, there's really nothing interesting at all. Um, it has not been ransacked, um, but probably probably whoever came by just didn't bother. Okay. Can I uh, investigate these barrels for anything? See if there's anything we can take. Yep. From them, even though I'm not proficient in it. Uh, you find 14 gold pieces in a barrel. Okay. So I'm going to put that on the group loot sheet. Our first group loot. Just pulling out my calculator to see how much. And was, was Orson keeping watch here at the entrance? Yeah, he was basically staying there to see. Okay, uh, I'm just going to inform you of what was found in the... Sh- uh, Oh wait, actually, that was he could find it. Never mind, it wasn't in the shack. I'm just gonna stand here and twiddle my thumbs. I thought Zeke said that he found bodies. No. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, you did. Armor and a child in the well. Common disposal technique. Like I, I'm looking out, but I'm, if anybody looks over there, Orson's like visibly raging. Like <laughs> he's angry. 
Well, plus side, empty home, seems sturdy, defensible position, one way in. Doubtful at the same place twice. We could camp here for the day if we wanted to. Uh, do we know about what time it is? Uh, like late afternoon, early evening. Okay. Yeah, if we want to set up camp here. Do you, do we think we should be putting two on watches since there's a, seems to be a lot of death around here? Yeah, I don't breathe water very well. I agree. Okay. I'd probably second that. Right. I have an idea. Do we we want to get these bandits, right? Do we want to... Are we in agreement on that or, or no? We don't have to be, but... The ones in the water? That's a farmer. The bandits that looted this place. I wouldn't mind uh, cutting some throats if we come across them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm not obliged to go so far out of the way, but if they're around... Yeah. yeah. I thought it was too. Um, could have taken a lot of loot from the merchant. Could be possible. Yeah. Um, I thought it was to set up a bonfire here, so if they are around, like it'll be easily visible. They might double back to see what's going on at this place they already looted. I mean, there's plenty is of. Is that uh... by the tree? Yeah, that's an eagle. Eagle by the tree. Does anyone notice the commonality of eagle since they live in the south coast? Mm. Could be scouts for the bandit. It's common to use birds of prey to go out out flush out prey do we want to sleep in the shack or tents i say if we want them to come to us it might be wise to set up the tents but not actually be sleeping in them because the tents will be new to them so they may assume we're in there Sounds i agree fun. Tents by the water a nice fire. how many pair of traps did you buy uh, I have one, and then I think someone else bought one. So I guess set those by the entrance to this thing. Yeah, there we go. If we were going to make a big fire, there's plenty of uh, destroyed plants here that we could all gather up if we're trying this to attract them. a pile of them. lumber here. We could use this pile of lumber. That too, I just noticed that. Good eye. And technically the shack, if we want to. <laughs> well, yeah, that's very, very valid. 100% <laughs> oh. valid. Well, for simple hygienic reasons, shouldn't we get the side of the water? Okay, the portable water supply? What is this hygiene you speak of? I'm confused. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'd well, like to get the bodies out of the water. Well, even even pretend medieval people would know to get dead bodies out of a well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we were already planning on burying them. If I remember. Uh, would anybody like to come down to the body of water and retrieve those other bodies as well with me? I think uh, I'll join you in that. Who was that? Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, so I construct the biggest bonfire I can possibly imagine here. Um, but I think we'll leave the shed intact. Does that make sense? Like if they they can see the shed kind of from far away. Yeah. If they see the shed burning. I think that's a sign that it's not just a random thing. <clears throat> Secondary uh, thought. Caution, people might think we're the ones who drown these personnel. That's, well, that's possible. I just recall somebody wanted to give them a burial. Um, but if you'd like to leave them here, do that in the morning before we leave. We could do that as well. Oh, no. Get them out. Yeah. Right. Uh, we need the football water. 
I'll take off my my pack and my cloak. Pretty yes, much. I'll be taking off my pack and my yellow pants, not to dirty them. <laughs> um, do, did you want to go in, Perrin? We could just tie. We could give you a rope. You could fasten it around them, and I can pull them in. Might as well. I'm already halfway there, anyways. All right. Fasten myself a little, little rope lasso, and uh, we need to pull right on in there. I'll be very interested to see these bodies. They're using their poisons. They're syndicated. Um, once the bonfire's going, I'll start digging um, graves, I guess, in the in the crop area. Makes sense. Could be good for the snow. If you just want to head towards me with the rope, I can start pulling when you're ready. Yeah, I'm not sure where they are, but I'm gonna. I I, I did see them, so I'm hoping I could just fasten it and. Hand it over to you. All right. Uh, do you need us making any kind of checks to pull these bodies in? No, not really. It's not that difficult. Okay. Awesome. Can I do a medicine check and plan to determine how the death of and if there's any bruises or hands? Yeah. Put my pack in my back on. Perrin will grab his pants, uh, but will air dry before ruining the pants. Okay, and... Was I able to assist uh, Zeke in that check? I forgot to check. If you are proficient in medicine, you can. And so, knowing uh, just outside question, am I only proficient if it, the checkbox is blue? Yep. Okay, so even if I have numbers by it, if it's not blue, I'm not proficient. Yep. The um, almost all of them will have numbers by them, but if the checkbox, if there's no blue checkbox, then you're not proficient. Okay. <clears throat> but most characters in most situations. <clears throat> can still attempt a skill that they're not proficient in. But you can't assist, and sometimes there's other restrictions on it. Okay, so you can only assist if you're proficient. All right. I will... You can only assist if you're proficient, and you can only assist someone else who is also proficient. So both, both have to be proficient. Okay. Could I dive a little bit into this water, see if anything else is dropped in there besides the bodies? You can. It's really not that deep. It's it never. You, you're never in over your head at any anywhere in that pond. Even me. Oh, are you? A, you're a halfling, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, you would be in over your head in the middle, but but nothing visible to the eye since it's a shallow, semi-clear pool. Nothing obvious, no. Alrighty, just checking. Are you able to discern anything? Yeah, I rolled a medicine check as well, since there are four bodies. Um, the bodies are definitely severely bludgeoned. Like, there's contusions that are over more than 50% of the body and um, swelling that probably has been made worse underwater but um, and several broken bones Whether this was personal or dealing with savage just straight savages yes by the cudgel and the bludgeoning damage could possibly be a large animal with fists. Bloody 
Uh, I'm just going to tap the crystal uh, to the entire group and ask who who it was that wanted to do a burial. And if they wanted to do it now mm -hmm. since we got these four out. I started on some graves over here, actually. That was me, I think. Nobody nobody was against it. So. Okay. <laughs> that was just the one that had the idea. But yeah, if you could bring them over here, that would be great. Or if you need help, let me know. Okay. Uh, how many of, I don't know, the sizes of these bodies, would I be able to carry one or two? I got a mule. I might help. You can... Let's try for God. Yeah, if you, between you guys and the mule and your your horses, you can probably carry all of them without too much problem. Okay. Do that. Is that eagle still here? Well, it's flying around. Okay, it's up in the air? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And did we want to put the tents up here? Whatever you think is good. So where this wood pile is, is where I did the bonfire. So. Does this eagle seem to be flying with purpose or just kind of circling? Uh, really neither. It's not even circling. It's just flying meandering. around. Meandering. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess we may camp here till morning, but like double watch... For sure, mm -hmm. double watch this time. What's that? Start, I said for sure, double watch this time. Could probably yeah. get started a little earlier so we're not wasting daylight tomorrow. I mean, yeah, I don't want to stay here a month waiting for these guys to maybe come yeah. back. I'm just going to set the tents up right, right there and there. Unless, or are you all planning to sleep in them? Or the shack? sleep in them I'd personally rather sleep in the tent than in some dead guy's shed I just think it's more respectful like we have our own well he's gear. not going to be using it anymore <clears throat> also the shed could be a defensive I'm just saying that's my opinion you do what you want Uh, which two want to take first watch? I'll take first watch. I had the full night's rest last night. Alright, let me change this really quick. It's up like all night last night, so Orson probably crashes. Um, I can take first watch with you as well. Okay. I'll hop on that second watch. Who's that? Yeah. Sorry, I'll take that second watch. There you are. All right. Zeke, I'll take second watch as well. Okay. And how long are we doing them for? Oh, um, for two-person watches, I think we're doing four hours each time. Okay. To make sure everybody can get their eight hours of sleep. It'll be a 12 hours. That's so fine. Yeah, 12 hours, I feel like it's plenty of time to... And who wants right. to go on? You know what you could do is you could do with um, three two-person watches, you could do four, three, four. And then the people okay. who have to break their sleep would have a slightly um, easier shift and everybody would still get enough sleep. Sounds good with me. I like that. Yep. And it's not 12 hours. Like, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll take last watch with whoever. All right. 
mean, I just sleep in a sleeping in my like bedroll under the stars here, kind of. Um. I just set it to that for now, so we don't lose our single watch order. Nice. <clears throat> Uh, well, at any rate, the uh, night passes uneventfully, other than the fact that the stars look beautiful. It's a pretty clear night, and it's pretty cold. But um, other than that, you are um, awake the next morning, and you have very um, you have a very good night of sleep. I'm going to see if, um, on our way out, I'm going to see if uh, Muffin can pick up any sense out here. Actually, I don't think she has anything to do with that, so maybe not. What kind of, is she looking for any kind of scent in particular, or is it just whatever? If she picks up something interesting, uh -huh. or... Yeah, like any scent that's not us and not already located in the in the shack like something besides those scents does that make sense is that am i allowed to do that yeah um but she has an intelligence of eight so okay um and she understands she understands all of the languages i speak so um i think i can get that across okay she does pick up a trail that um comes up the approaching slope into um, the shack and okay. moves around the moves around the farm. Also, spends some time around the well. All right. Can she sense it like as we're leaving, like where it would have gone? If we leave out that entrance, like that's our. I assume that's where we're going, right, guys? Yeah. Okay. Can she pick up anything that way, or? Yeah, she's got something. Okay. There's a girl. And do we want to do the same marching order? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. talk to her <laughs> I like how much better these are like physically than familiars but they don't have that cool telepathic bond or anything <laughs> okay she's got something else she's going this way oh. so they get the people in the uh... <laughs> dog she's excited about something I get her to slow down oh she will but she can barely contain herself <laughs> she's like <laughs> oh mind. my gosh all right so what's the do we want to Go in sneaky or get a lay of the land. What do you guys want to do? Well, we don't really even know what she's found at this point. We don't. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, I can sneak in with whoever else wants to go and just to see what's going on. I can sneak in with you. Okay. All right. 
Okay, I think I'm a little sneaky. Heavy armor? What? Heavy armor. I think I need to change that. I don't think I can use heavy armor. Oh, it's the scale mail. The scale mail. I it says heavy armor, but that's wrong. What it is is it's, it's medium, right? Yeah, it's medium, but it's it's disadvantage on stealth. With oh, for, with scale mail. For scale? Yeah, because okay. it's loud. Well, I you didn't want to like twenty three and a twenty four. So. Yeah, I think we're good, but um. Uh, but I didn't go anywhere. All right. I'll be stealthy back here. That's why no one knows I'm uh, I'm coming. Uh, all right. So we get to this arch. Anything here? I guess not. Um... It's not letting me select the token now. Oh, okay. I'll wait. Um, grab grab the beast of the land token, and if you can. I think you can grab it too and just send it over to the left. To the left here? Yep. Like this? Yep, that's good. Okay. Cast bandits. Okay, and then she's going to continue the trail to the north. Get a good dog. That's all you need. Good dog and good boots. Okay. Bloop. And we're going to put you guys right there. And I figure this travel is going to be a little slower. Oh, it did the thing. So, also, a uh, roll 20 fun fact. Every once in a while when I click on reveal area, it's going to it's gonna give me hide area instead. Oh, nice. It's the exact opposite of what I asked for. But just a fun little roll 20 thing. So I don't know if you can see this visually, if it makes sense, but the the road, like, it goes here, and then it kind of wraps around the other side of the mountain, and then it comes down at a lower elevation down here. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you'll probably make it about here by the end of the night. And that is as far as you will make it. See if you encounter anything. Mm -hmm. That's a positive. Work is still kind of going where we're going, so that's kind of good news. That was a one on the D100 for mm -hmm. getting dragons. Oh, shit. Three giant ancient <laughs> dragons to descend upon you. I'm out. Set up the tents and ask <laughs> if we want to do uh, solo or duo watches. 
Um, I think Solo's good if we stay off the beaten path. We're not doing any bonfires tonight, right? Oh, shoot. That's the wrong thing. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Don't worry, I'm creeping it, though. Creeping Screenshot it. it. Yep, yep. <laughs> I, I now have foresight. <laughs> Eyes roll back into his head. Those rocks look friendly. It's more the holes that I'm worried about, not so much the rocks. <laughs> Bonk. Tiny map. Oh, God. Oh, hey. Whoop. Oh, sorry. Stop moving. I didn't. You can see um, two hill giants on the other side, and we're going to see if they notice you or not. They do not. Ooh, good. <laughs> oh, so we can't really beat each other. Um. Thoughts? Now, I am going to open the um, turn order window, and it is very important that before you roll initiative, you select your token, because it will not put you in the turn order window if you don't click on your token first, and then click the initiative button. Fun roll 20 stuff. Uh, is the where's that initiative button? Is it on the one on the character sheet, or is it? Yeah, it's the one on the character. Yep. You have to click on word initiative. Ah, oh, got it. Yeah. Twenty nine. Wow, that's pretty good. Nine. Shit. It's a lot. It's that alert feed. That's worth it. Oh, yeah. You can tell. Which feed is that? Alert? Alert, yeah. It gives you plus yeah. five initiative. I I feel the same way. I, I, uh, I've I always liked, you know, you could have all the powers in the world if you if everybody else acts before you and you get killed. doesn't do you any good. <laughs> so, um, Zeke is going to go first. Do we think we should clear this precarious bridge before we engage? Or so no one gets caught on them, it? Or we should put them we across the bridge. them on the bridge, bridge. that's better. Yeah. Cross it? Yeah, I think the bottlenecking on the bridge might be a good idea. Okay. Like, we let them come yeah, to us, but they only come in one at a time, right? So... Yep. And we might be able to force one of them off the bridge. Oh, um, these are hill giants. So, um, for those of you that don't know, in the group, um, I'm one of those hybrid people you might have heard of. So I think I'm gonna go be a bear person <laughs> for this fight. <laughs> okay. I think that'll give me a better chance of survival. And, and so, how we feel about that? We'll talk about it later. Don't worry. It's not the strangest thing I've seen. All right. I have encountered some. Uh, Glant, is that gayer? I've seen some poor responses to this. So uh, Orson bears out like the the hybrid form. Okay. And um, readies his bow. As awkward as that is with bear claws, but still. Well, if you're halfway in between. Yeah, the hybrid, yeah. Then, yeah, as the hybrid, you can you have opposable thumbs, and you can use your weapons. 
Um, Zeke, right, right. what I is... Those what is Zeke doing? Yeah, that's stuff I'm trying to figure it out. Um... I think we're going to move. I'm going to move up about 20, 25. Maybe not the front line. Maybe if you need to be. And then uh, actually just take the dodge. Okay. Just going to pull my sword out at the ready. I guess the free action I'll have the dagger. Okay, shoe. A dagger. Uh, shoe is going to move up right beside Aurora. And then he's going to. Well, maybe. Can't. Oh, I'm clicking gayer. That's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I move my guy? Um, shoe is going to cast Eldritch Blast on that first one. Nice. Yeah. I'm just going to go and get this party started. With an 18 to hit. Boom. Nice. Oh, cool. And 11 damage. And I think that's about all I can do right now. Yeah. It kind of blasts him back a little bit. Doesn't really knock him off his feet or anything, but he seems to dimly comprehend it. Orson, you are bearing out, right? Uh, I, I thought I would do that before combat, but I can do that as my action. That's fine. Uh, Aurora? Uh, well, if we're trying to get them to us, um, just going to move up. Actually, I'll just hold hold my sword for a swing uh, for when they cross the bridge onto our side. If that that is the plan, right? We're trying to bait them yeah. across the bridge. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll hold my action. I don't like that one right there, so the other one can't get around. Okay. Perrin. I'm going to go ahead and cast Mirror Image on myself. Nice. And then as a bonus action, I think I will... Uh, I'll give a, little, give a little inspiration to Zeke. Uh, just going to give him a little song... Um, I don't know. Do you guys? Is there, should I sing something? I don't know. Don't I get squished. Love... Don't get squished. <laughs> I would love it if you sing sung something. Yeah, sure. Um, I had a couple. I had a couple of these planned. Um... <clears throat> I give inspiration. It's just what I do. Every time I open up my mouth, it comes out gold. That is phenomenal. Wait, wait, wait. There's four of you. You can you can harmonize as a barbershop quartet. Oh my gosh, yes. Acapella. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't harmonize right now. <laughs> I don't know if I can harmonize like, right now. I'm imagining like boys to men where everybody's doing their own thing. Like, everybody's singing their own part. 100%, but each one has doing something with a mustache as well. Oh, oh I need a mustache. You has well. no facial hair. Can the mirror images come out one at a time, like bump, 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 bump? <laughs> yes. Like in rhythmic succession? <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> awesome. And that'll pass my turn. I'll give you my inspiration for that. That's a great move. Gayer, your turn. All right. I'm going to move up right here. Oh, thank God. I was getting lonely. And I'm going to hold... Okay, bonus action. I'm going to cast... 
Uh, Shield of Faith. Okay. On to... Zeke. Okay. Which is going to give you... A plus two to your armor class. Thank you. And then... If I can, I'm not sure how if you do holding actions any different or anything. I uh, just hold. as written. Okay, I will hold my channel divinity as my action for when they both get within 30 feet of me. Cool. Okay, give me just one moment here. Okay, and that is the... Um, Okay, what was that again? Spirit Shield? Uh, Shield of Faith. I can, I can ping it on the thing if you need me to. I got it. And it's 2 AC. Yep. Okay, cool. I got it. And that's physique. And then I will hold my action to use Conquering Presence when they're both within 30 feet. Okay. And that'll do it. Uh, the one that got hit with an Eldritch Blast is going to hurl a rock. And it should hit both Zeke and Gayer. And it hits you both for 26 damage. No, oh, wait a minute. Shit. Wait a minute. Yeah, so I took the dodge as, a, as an action. So what does that do? Uh, roll uh, acrobatics. This isn't exactly what it does, but I'm just going to let you do it. Okay, you're able to dodge out of the way. Gayer is going to take the 26 damage, though. Aw, oh, yeah. And the other one is not aware that combat has started. But now he is. Zeke, it is your turn. Are you with us, Zeke? Yeah, yeah, I am. Sorry, I was just thinking. All right. No problem. I think uh, that's tough. Yeah, it's not what. Oh man, there's not much I can do. Uh, I guess move move to the back and take the uh, dog to action again because they have range. So it's gonna be kind of down the bridge. Uh, the one guy was holding one boulder that he threw. And and when I'm when I'm. When I'm measuring the distance, is it to wherever it touches their them all? Or does it have to be like in the middle? Yeah, it's pretty much wherever it touches. You know, if it touches, you're fine. All right, I think I'm just going to. Uh, Use a uh, a healing kit uh, that I have. One of the triggers of my healing kit. I'm Gayer. 
Wait a minute. Pause. Sorry. He is just out of range. He's actually at disadvantage. So that 26 damage only hit an armor class of 11. So Gayer took nothing. Nice. Like All right. Well, that that changes my uh, changes my idea a little bit then. All right. So I'm gonna move up a little bit. So with that range, I'm just gonna uh, dagger at him. And to attack with it, I just click on the actual dagger for the turn. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Okay. Right, Shu, your turn. Uh, Shu is probably just going to be a second round, same as the first. Um, going to go ahead and cast Eldritch Blast again on him. See if we can antagonize him to get closer. Same one? Yep, same one. Don't want to alert the other one too early. If we could just get out one of them right now oh the other one has been has become aware now oh okay. so well, on yeah. his his still, next move he'll be up there uh, but, still better than focus fire but <laughs> but that hits so and yeah no that's it for right now Yeah, shoot. Sorry, I clacked when I meant to click. Oh, yeah. And my magic, it's... Uh, I'm using, like, a quarterstaff, and I'm, like, shooting it out of the end of the quarterstaff, and it's, like, this uh, almost, like, blackish, purplish, like, energy that's, like, going out. Nice. If, if anybody was, like, wondering. Cool. So, not like that? Oh, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> For effects, eh, any effects you got, I'll take them. <laughs> oh, that's right, you have all those effects. I saw the bubbles on Adric. Yeah, when he was drunk. <laughs> was that actually Adric sitting there drunk? Yeah. Oh, damn it. All right. <laughs> No, uh, Orson, Best your turn. Ever. Uh, all right, I'm going to move up a bit. I want to leave a clear uh, spot for Aurora to get through. Um, and I'm going to tag that first giant with an arrow. Uh, Oh, hell yeah, crit that mofo. Does that account for the crit or no? Yeah, that's a critical hit. That Does the math account for that, though? Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, you rolled the three on your D8, and it doubled it to six. Oh, yep. And then you got right. the plus two. Yep, yep. Do you have any other actions that you want to take? Um, no, I don't have any. I can't take another action right now. So I'm gonna yell. I'm gonna yell at the the ogre or the the hill giant. Um, in common, like, come at us, coward. Okay. Um, just gonna. Are we still waiting on this side to try to get him to cross, or are we just? As long as they yeah, get on yeah. that bridge, I think we're fine. All right, yeah. then I will move well, up next. Up here, if you moved up here, around here, that would get him bottlenecked. Like, the other one couldn't get around. <clears throat> right. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. I will move up. 
next to Zeke, or you want one above? Up here? Yeah, after the boulder effect, I'd try and get as much space in as you could. And question, um, if I were to throw one of the javelins I have on me, what would be the distance on that? Uh, it's not very far. Um, it's, it's like 20 to 60. Sounds about right. I think yeah, 60, I think... anything past 20 is like disadvantage or something like that on it. Actually, I think a javelin's 3120, isn't it? Oh, 3120. Yeah, 3120. Right. So it would be disadvantage because you're past 30. Let me double check. But if we yeah, take that yeah. DM roll that dm roll right there was pretty <laughs> hot though not gonna lie <laughs> oh yeah no it has yeah. has to be your roll i was just checking oh oh, oh. okay um any question <laughs> if i uh if i hold an action um and the the troll advances, would I still get my bonus action? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you do. Okay, would I be able to do the bonus action before I release the hold action? Asking oh. for rage purposes. You can... I think you have to do the hold action first. If you're holding, okay. If you're holding an action, that's all you can do is the action that you're holding. But you yeah, can take you your bonus you action can't hold on your turn. Action. Okay. You can go ahead and rage now and then hold okay. your action if you wanted to. All right. Uh, then I will rage and uh, hold a, hold my action till they get within melee range with me. Okay. <clears throat> I think I got to call it after this round because I'm falling asleep in my chair. <laughs> uh, Perrin, your turn. Um, well, there's not a whole lot I can do from this far away. Uh, so I will just scoot up a couple of squares and I think I'll hold a dissonant whispers if they get within 60 feet of me. Okay. And that'll be it. Okay. All right then, Gayer. Let's see here. So I know on like a spell, if you hold it and don't use it, it disappears. But I don't think my conquering presence is the same because it's not a spell. Uh, I'm not sure. Does it say it disappears? Um, let me... Oh, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, if you're holding an action with a spell, you you don't really start casting it until it, until it triggers the action that okay. you're holding, so... Okay, so I didn't, like, use it or anything already. No. Okay. So I'm going to do much the same. I'm going to move up there, and then I will hold my action for both of them to be within 30 feet. And I'll cast, or I'll use Conquering Presence. Okay. Go ahead and cast it. And any other held actions that go off when he gets to you? Okay. Go ahead and do that. Well, is the other one in 30 as well? No. The other I one. I said I'll hold it until they both do. Oh, okay. Did anybody else have a held action that triggers when they get close? When one yes, of them gets I, close? I... Yes, I also have my dissonant whispers. Yep, okay, go ahead. DC 12. And do I need to I need to make my attack move? Yeah. Yeah, there should be... Um, all you have to do is click on the weapon on your... Um, Yowza. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, oh he saved. Dumb, dumb luck. Damn. That's all right. You got it out of the way for me. I was hoping to turn it right around so you guys could get opportunity attacks on it. Doesn't look like that yet. So it's going to be. Okay. This is going to whack Aurora. Can I use my um, reaction? No, I can't because reactions used for holding an action, isn't it? Yeah. So the attack is 12, so that would miss if my AC is 13? Yep. And then this one is going to swing at... Um, I think that's um, above Zeke. That's Gayer, right? Yep. And that, that is my armor class, so that hits. That hits for 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Did my, did my attack hit the troll? I didn't think it did because it was only a 10. Dissonant Whisper? Oh, no, no, no. You did the great sword. It's 12. Yeah. Do you have advantage? Uh, I do. I'm raging. So I oh, run. okay. I didn't catch that because I'm getting tired. So that would have hit. So yeah, you slashed him open. Um, but otherwise, so I'll take that damage off. Okay. Um, so this guy is going to go simple and he's just Before trying. Before he does that. Can he make his saving throws? Yep. So that's a wisdom. For 15 on both of them. Cool, they're frightened of me, which means any uh, attacks they have when they're uh, in minus side of me are at disadvantage. Okay. okay. And they can't move closer to me. So I don't know if the other one would have stopped right when he hit 30 feet and I let it out. Not sure if that matters. Okay. And they can say... Yeah, okay. This one end gets of each of its turns. This one gets smacked in the head a couple times by the by the other's great club and he kicks him off the bridge. And then they save with what now? At the end of their turn they can make another saving throw. Oh, okay, to become not frightened. Correct. And he can't move closer to me as long as uh, he's frightened. Okay. He is still frightened. So I have to cut it here because uh, I'm falling asleep. So we'll just we'll pick okay. right back up here next week. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Alrighty. Thank All right. you. No problem. Yeah. I will see you guys next week. Oh, Good night. Sure. Like night. Later. Hey, you guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. Cool. All right. Have a good one. Up.